so very warm uh, na welcome namaste to everybody for being part of yet another session at our nice arohana and this is the second last session for this calendar year and um, as always uh, it's a pleasure to host all of you and i'm going to again you know uh, at the risk of uh, unbelievable repetition but it's important so that all the newer attendees get to also uh, you know uh, note all of this is that if we have a few housekeeping uh, notes please uh, uh, note that uh, all participants will be muted uh, there will be adequate time in the end for your uh, questions to be answered uh, you know is uh, you know very Uh, accommodating in that regard, and so please post all your questions in the Q and A box uh, that will appear at the bottom of your screens. Um, we, I will uh, pick up the questions, pose it to Chino, who will respond. The ones that do not get uh, responded to due to the paucity of time, uh, we will um, have Chino respond to them subsequently. And uh, please keep your questions responses brief. and as always uh, do note this email id arohana at niceorg.in and send in your uh, queries and comments and observations there um more information you know our website i think by heart by now which is uh, niceorg.in is also getting live streamed on facebook facebook.com forward slash niceorg and uh, i'm sure all of you uh, are aware of our linkedin group uh, page please note the link there join and uh, stay abreast of all the announcements all the speakers information about upcoming uh, sessions programs both at nice as well as at uh, arohana and uh, those of you who missed this uh, session because you may have to leave midway or whatever and you've got friends who are interested they can also tune in later to our um, youtube channel you have the link there uh, please make a note of that and uh, you know you can watch all our sessions on youtube uh, so it's available on facebook it's available on youtube it's also available obviously live right now and um, so all that remains before we jump into this what promises to be a very interesting fascinating conversation Uh, is to uh, introduce very warmly Chino Srinivasan, um, you know, leadership, executive, and happiness coach. So we're going to ask him all those tough questions about what all these words mean, uh, highly ominous sounding, and but it's very important. And I think, it, particularly in these uh, times of COVID, uh, the importance of uh, self management. In our last session, we learned about how to manage others. That is, managing people, managing teams. and managing conflicts in our teams and people and this is even more important namely how do you manage yourself and uh, so without further ado let me uh introduce this session by welcoming chinu and jumping straight into uh you know our uh, questions uh, so let me start you know uh, in you know the first question that i think uh, you know will be useful for us to understand and for you to set the context uh you know we talked about you being a leadership executive and a happiness coach can you help us understand what all this means and why are they important okay thank you very much uh, sanjay for the opportunity uh pleasure privilege to be able to to share some of what i have um so <clears throat> the question that i get asked all the time how can you coach somebody to be happy you call yourself a happiness coach so the right. question i ask is uh, what do you think happiness is and if people tell me it's a state of mind then my life becomes a little simpler because then i don't have to uh, start with the differences between pleasure and happiness and all of that right so if it's a state of mind sanjay i think you know it depends on the choices that we make right so i tell them that 30% of my my work is helping people make appropriate choices that give them the greatest potential probability of the future they would like to create right so 30% is that so immediately what's the 70% 70% is about making peace with the choices they've already made in life ha huh, yes not 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 having conflict huh? Uh, yeah, and you know, regret, conflict, 
um, and I, I liken it to writing a, you know, driving a car. Mm -hmm. Many people, we have a rear view mirror and we have two rear view mirrors on the side. Right. I say that, you know, five to 10% of the time, we should look once in a while into the rear view mirror. Right. But in life, most people, especially if they've gone into a pothole somewhere, they have a tendency to keep looking into the rear view mirror or worse till they turn around, look like this and drive forward. Right. And then they complain that they have problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, happiness coaching actually encompasses uh, leadership, executive, performance, relationship coaching as well. Right. So all so, of this put together is happiness coaching. Yes, is it is. With the, it? Absolutely. And it is, uh, it is, it deals with the individual. Mm -hmm. And even if it's a team, it's a group of individuals. So we need to work with each individual Got to be it. able to help them understand themselves. Right. And that's the toughest, uh, as you've mentioned. Of course. Of course. And, and also only by helping oneself does the, the, the team also benefit, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Thanks. So that was at least, uh, you know, now we've got a baseline about what all this happiness uh, coaching is all about. Now, you know, this is a session on self-management. You've been doing this for several years, you know, with senior people, entrepreneurs and others. Now, if I were to ask you, what all does self-management involve? Uh, what have you found to be the biggest obstacles that people yeah. who you talk to uh, face with regard to quote unquote self-management? Yeah. Now, I uh, recently I came across a very interesting quote by Jason Silva. Mm -hmm. I think this encompasses all of uh, this that we are talking about. It's a, it sounds a little convoluted, but I'll I'll actually read it out. Yeah. He said, "I am not who I think I am." Mm -hmm. I am not who you think I am. Mm -hmm. I am who I think you think I am. Uh, yeah. Right. So it is like one of those Russian dogs. Think that last part again, the last sentence. I, I am who I think you think I am. Right. right. So, uh, you know, this goes back to also understanding that personality or persona. <clears throat> right. It's Greek for mask. Correct. And uh, they used to have those masks when they played those parts. Right, right. In real life, we have these masks. Sometimes the masks become what people think they are. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, self-management, first and foremost, knowing myself or what I am or who I am. So being honest, authentic to yourself. Yes. So you can't lie to yourself. Is that absolutely, right? absolutely? And uh, lying to ourselves is uh, is evolutionarily and psychologically a very convenient and useful mechanism mm -hmm. because there are some things that we would not want to uh, would not want to keep on thinking about pondering over. Right. So the the brain in its uh, infinite wisdom, what it does is it. Uh, always makes us the hero of our story. Correct. Yeah. And outsources right. blame. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at it, that that is the, and, and therefore, uh, one is to be able to look at myself for what I am, who I am, and have the willingness to take feedback, mm -hmm. actively solicit, make it safe for people to give me feedback. Right. Otherwise, it'll be like the emperor's new clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So I think uh, the biggest obstacles are being willing to, one, introspect. Mm -hmm. Second is, uh, you know, the, uh, the toughest thing that we probably learn uh, in childhood are how to walk. Those of us who are, are, are able to walk, mm -hmm. we learn how to walk and how to talk. Right. And... Uh, Talk, you know, talking or even cycling, it's not possible to read a book and learn how to do that. Correct. We need to learn uh, balance. Mm -hmm. And that balance becomes possible because we respect and act on feedback that gravity gives us. Correct. Huh. So, so I similarly, I, start, I learn. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. We don't give up. Right. But somewhere in, uh, in other aspects of the self, 
there is a lot of work that's been done sanjay in this area right. uh, in terms of the the neuro neurological setup you know what happens and there is a very a fantastic study that has been done by richard davidson right and uh, he's written a book called the emotional life of your brain mm-hmm. where he actually talks about uh, by age 7 there are certain emotional styles that are developed and when it becomes a style it actually affects the physiological structure of the brain itself oh okay and the good news is that it can it is the neuro, you know brain is plastic we can reprogram it and all of that right but self management if you look at what is the biggest uh, block is coming back to i am not who i think i am i am not who you think i am i am who i think you think i am that's the problem that's the problem because, because it's, problem. it's it's we are not being authentic we are not being honest with ourselves we are imagining or we are deluding ourselves into believing we are something else and not being able to distinguish the persona from the person absolutely and in many cases people are not even aware that they are doing this right so for example there's a lot of let's say social media related uh, talk about me i start believing that and having the delusions of grandeur and imagining i'm this great happening dude <laughs> absolutely deep inside i am not but yeah. kind of having a problem accepting it yeah you know uh, harold robbins actually uh, wrote about it in uh, stone for danny fisher stone for danny fisher yeah famous book uh, in that <clears throat> there is a passage which i actually share with people mm-hmm. where uh, you know danny fisher is supposed to be in this boxing match mm-hmm. and it is written in the first person so danny is writing about himself right so he said it should have been a cinch i should have had this guy by the first round and here i was in the third round and i hadn't even landed a punch right right and so the the the, the big guy comes and says Uh, looks at uh, zep the the manager and says what's wrong mm-hmm. and the operative part is what the manager zep says mm. the kids are kids been reading the newspapers too much <laughs> and believing that he is really invincible yeah yeah, yeah. many people start important. i think it's very important i mean this point about <coughs> self delusion yeah <coughs> now you know when we you know particularly in in these times uh, when you know mm-hmm. this kind of bad news and adversity and uh, you know various uh, let's say uh, unhappy circumstances all around um, and one reads about it pretty much most of the time and then you know companies are facing their own challenges there's work from home there's you know uh, people are being laid off and all other problems it is imperative that people stay motivated it's imperative that they stay positive right now we've we called you in and you were addressing a bunch of people about hey you know here are uh, you know what what are the tools that you would recommend that people pull out of their toolbox mm-hmm. huh? so that they stay motivated they stay positive you know in the current situation or extrapolation into any other situation as well um i'm going to give you something that is very counterintuitive yeah okay i'm going to actually start with be better organized and ensure that people get rest but organized and ensure people get get rest get rest ah okay okay, okay. they need to ensure that you know uh, i've been saying this to quite a few people and uh, that the like they say of course you should meditate every day right for at least 30 minutes and mm-hmm. the days that are extremely busy you should definitely meditate for an hour <laughs> yeah yeah right so i think uh, there is enough and more uh, data that's coming up sanjay that uh, uh, people who are getting less than 7 hours of sleep mm-hmm. you know for many of us who have been in the corporate world who've lived in the corporate world for a while yeah you know what is this 7 hours you know yeah. i'm not getting 5 yeah no exactly right. <clears throat> but there is research that's coming out that's saying that uh sleep and uh, sleep is absolutely important because what it does to the internal biochemical environment when we are not rested mm-hmm. is that the toxins are not taken out mm-hmm. especially in the brain which is what controls all of it 
The only time the toxins in the brain are taken care of is when we are able to sleep. So getting so rest is important. Getting uh, sleep is sleep. absolutely important. And good sleep, not sedated sleep. Right. right. Not, uh, you know, passing out, so to say. Mm -hmm. Right. Not uh, drinking myself to a stupor and falling <laughs> down. No. This is good quality sleep. That's Got the it. first thing. Right. One, because when we are rested, mm -hmm. we are able to respond to situations rather than react. Got it. Right. So the, uh, you know, the cortisol levels come down. So the amount of the right kind of chemicals being in the system are enhanced. Got so that's the first step. Yeah. This, uh, because we, are, we have slept well, it then becomes easy for us to be energetic and inspired. Got it. Physically energetic. And as a leader in these times, especially important that we need to be energetic, we need to be inspiring. Mm. Yeah. And... This also having rested because the brain does a defrag and all of that. So if you have, if you go to sleep with a problem, chances are, if you really sleep well, you'll get up with an, at least a light of a solution to the problem. I've, I've had that experience, right? When you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning and suddenly you start seeing things differently. Absolutely. And that's because the data is moved around in the brain. So it moves from the 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 uh, you know the working memory into the long long term memory. It actually puts it does a defrag and all of that. So it helps us be better solution focused rather than problem focused. Got it. So rest right. and sleep is critical. Absolutely, and I think uh, uh, because when I am upset. Mm -hmm chances are that my responses are not going to be very inspiring. Right. So I, as a leader, I need to learn how to set up from being upset very quickly. Mm -hmm. Simple techniques. Yeah. You know, this is... Yeah, just tell us that. Simple okay. technique. Just look up for a count of five. Mm -hmm. Just look up, roll your eyes up for a count of five mm -hmm. or ten. Mm -hmm. Even I know that in certain situations, it's not possible that we can look up for a count of five. Right. In those situations, just looking up, just rolling the eyeballs up and looking up a little hmm. immediately brings down uh, uh, the, the, let's say, the fight or flight kind of uh, environment within and helps us anxiety, calm down. Anxiety levels tend to reduce. Absolutely. Hmm. Right. And that's because when we are looking down, when we are intent, Mm. The parts of the brain that are completely uh, engaged are the emotional parts of the brain. Right. When we look up the visual parts of the brain and the emotional parts, visual part is engaged, the emotional part is reduced. Got it. So just looking up and uh, they say breathe deeply. No, not breathe deeply. Breathe with awareness and breathe gently. Gently. Okay. Gently. Slow down the breathing. So you, you uh, actually feel your heart... Pulsating, Absol right? Absolutely. Calm it down. And that absolutely breathing. I once was working with, uh, with the CEO of a company, Sanjay, who was having tremendous issues within the company. And uh, when we were sitting there, he actually said, look at, look at my heart rate. Right now it's 130. My God. Huh. And he was sitting there. Mm. So I said, okay, let's just do this for one minute. Mm. So I said, breathe with awareness. So I just said, inhale very slowly, so when not you say, deeply. So when you say breathe with awareness, just for the benefit of uh, the audience, it means become aware of the breath en uh, entering your nostrils, going deep inside, right? And you, you feeling it inside you as, it exhale, as you exhale. Yeah. Is that what it is? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when I say breathe with awareness and slowly is it's not... That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a gradual, you know, count of five. Yeah. One, th one, two, three, four, five for the inhale, very slowly. Right. And the exhale being extended by two seconds to a count of seven. Got it. So uh, if you look at it, we've got 12 seconds for one breathing cycle. So you do five breaths of this. So that's a minute. huh? That's a minute. Got you it. do three cycles of that. 15 breath cycles mm -hmm. 
We just did this with this CEO. Got it. From 130, it had come down to 85. Wow. Uh, Three minutes later. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that, you know, I'm, I'm talking about how can we manage my, emo how can I manage my emotional self? Got it. How can I create the environment that creates an environment for me that I'm not jumping the gun. I'm not screaming, shouting. Right. Right. That's, that's one. And uh, uh, many a time I also see that they're very useful to, I'm going away from the neurology and all of that to a behavioral thing, which is, yes. yes. I need to take 100% responsibility for the situation that exists. Right. For example, I'll give you a very uh, practical example. If there was something that I was saying that you were not understanding, mm -hmm. normally I would say, Sanjay, you're not understanding. Right. Change that to say, I have not made it easy for you to understand. I have not made you understand. Mm -hmm. Because the moment I say... I, the moment I say, I have not made you understand, then the responsibility is mine right. to inspire you to understand. Got it. I know it's difficult. It might sound a little, you know, you don't know. There is a fire that we are fighting. How do you expect us to do this? Might be one of the questions that people might have. Right. But we get, it is, uh, I also say that it is difficult, almost impossible until it becomes easy. Correct. Yeah. So we just need to become aware and be able to do that. Right. right. And uh, um, in these times, especially, you know, there is a tool that I give to people, which is a very simple tool. Mm -hmm. It is uh, a what if analysis with a difference. Mm -hmm. more, more, you know, it's a vicious cycle that people normally get into what if, what if, what if, and they get into a nested what if loop. Mm -hmm. And they can see only doomsdays and catastrophes mm -hmm. looming. Yeah. True, very true. So, yeah, I, 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 generally, I generally advise people that uh, don't go beyond two what-if cycles. Mm -hmm. What if you get to this and you get another what if, get to the third one, mm -hmm. stop there. Correct. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I say that there is a way in which we can handle it. Mm -hmm. This what if, if you look at it, is we are listing down everything that can go wrong. Correct. It's a long so, Laundry list. So first step is list down everything that can go wrong. Mm. But then against each and every one of them, most of this Sanjay, we are people are projecting that it might go wrong. Right. You know, worry, they say, is interest that is paid on a loan that we might take in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. So it doesn't make sense for us to ponder too much about what could go wrong. Mm -hmm. The next step is very important. Right. How can I prevent? What are all the ways in which I can prevent this eventuality from coming up at all? Which is, in another way, perhaps you know, a risk mitigation approach. Absolutely. Absolutely. Than panicking and you know getting stressed. Out. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the third step, the third step I say is uh, uh, this is called the P2S2 hmm. problem, prevention, solution, and support, risk right. mitigation. So, how can I solve for it? How can I prevent it? And even if with all the prevention, like today in COVID times, right. I take all the preventions. And if I start getting the symptoms, there's only one thing I need to do. I need to go to the doctor and take my medication and stay yeah. in isolation. Right. So be honest about what you experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Self-aware. Make Absolutely. sure you get adequate rest. When you, like you said, a proper good sleep. Right. Don't get anxious about things by imagining a scenario. Right. So don't worry about things you can't control, focus on stuff that you can, then yes. learn to respond. Don't just react to something that you see in front of you. And that Absolutely. is, you know, give yourself the five seconds, one minute, et cetera, yes. and learn to let go of the tension to yes. be able to handle this. Is yes. that a fair way to put it? Absolutely, you've got it spot on. Right. Just one small thing that I would like to add here is uh, engage in social interactions. Ah. Don't be a hermit. Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, they say uh, when we are, when we are not feeling good, we try to get, you know, we more often than not, we are not wanting to talk to people. Right. Right. Counterintuitively, it actually helps that we go and talk to people. Got it. Even better if we can actually go and help other people. Understood. Huh. That's a good point. Yeah. It, it is uh, because the moment we go and engage, and I'm not talking about just giving money. 
Yeah, yeah. Actively participate. Actively, actively participate like a soup kitchen or the langar that we have. Right, right. If we can actually do something like that, mm-hmm. it does a huge, uh, you know, it gives a huge benefit to the individual. Got it. So work with like-minded people to do something worthwhile, right? Uh, that Absolutely. spreads here and everywhere. Yes, yes. Got it. You know, good set of points. Now, moving on from that, uh, you know, given that our audience is largely entrepreneur, uh, uh, you know, as opposed to corporate executives, uh, you know, in your many years of doing all of this, you know, you've coached uh, senior executives, corporate CEOs and others. You also, I know, worked with entrepreneurs. And one is, a, and you know, clearly there's a difference between the two in the sense that corporate executives work within a very rigid or let's say semi-rigid framework. They tend to be much older. There's a hierarchical system. They've got a support team, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas entrepreneurs, it's, it's far more fluid as a structure, typically tend to be younger uh, and so on. What have been the, your experiences in working across these two types of uh, or groups of individuals, uh, what have been similarities? What have been differences? You know, just help us understand that. I think uh, exceptional question, Sanjay. I think uh, uh, yes, uh, older senior executives that work in a corporate kind of structure. Right. One, the environment doesn't allow them to do a few things. Got it. It's the name of the game. So uh, unfortunately, they are not able to do a few things. Mm -hmm. Even within the things that they can do, one of the things that I've noticed is that because they are, they've been around the block. Right. They are actually, uh, they are actually actively looking out for answers. They are willing to listen. Mm -hmm. They're willing to listen because most of them are at their wit's end in some, some instances. Right, right. The flip side of that is that because they're older and they have, they've been around the block, bringing about changes in terms of behavior, in terms of thinking patterns, et cetera, et cetera, becomes a little more difficult. Understood. Right. Uh, young entrepreneurs that I'm, 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 I'm very privileged to work with quite a few young entrepreneurs today. And uh, the energy is absolutely amazing. Mm. There is not much uh, baggage in terms of, of, of saying, you know, I won't do this. Right. So the, the older people, the, the company executives, as I would call them, they have a strong confirmation bias in cognitive dissonance. Just, just for the audience's benefit, <clears throat> just explain what confirmation bias is. So confirmation bias is this is the way I think it is and that's the way it has to be. Right. And uh, even when presented with data that shows that it's not the way it is, choosing not to look at it. Being right. dissonant and saying, no, 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 that doesn't exist. That's so not right. You believe what you want to believe and you look at Absolutely. data that supports your belief. So Absolutely. You, and you discard evidence to the contrary. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So uh, that, is, that seems to be a lot more within corporate executives and uh, uh, entrepreneurs, on the other hand, they are, they are young and they are very energetic. They engage a great deal. Mm-hmm. In terms of understanding, you're giving me, you're, you're asking me to do something. Let me, tell me why it will work. Ah, so they are you know? more curious. They want to know more. Absolutely. Which is why not? Entrepreneurial. <laughs> which, is, which is a very useful trait to have as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Yes. Right. So they are very, very keen. They're eager. And they're very, um, I'll use a word with, with caution. I'll use that word. They're combative in some cases. Yeah. So they challenge and, the system. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And, and, you know, that makes it all the more interesting because, you know, we can't just give some kind of an answer and, and hope to say that it will work. Nah. And, you know, by nature, entrepreneurs have a certain spark within them. Right, right. And they're they are going to make things happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, and therefore, questions, huh? and, and they ask questions. And they're saying, no, don't give me the snake oil kind of thing. Tell me why it'll work. Tell me how it'll work. Right. Right. And sometimes I have to tell them that uh, I, I explain to them, but there are certain things that I also tell them that uh, there are certain things that we understand and then do. Right. There are certain things that we do and then we understand. Correct. Huh. 
right? So uh, it's a judicious mix that we have to use there. But I think uh, the entrepreneurs are a little more, once, we, once they set their mind, they're at it. They get into it and they do it. Correct. The other difference that I see between chronologically older people and chronologically younger people right. is that uh, the older people are not very doomsday kind of hmm. oriented. Hmm. They've, well, they've had a... Shifting. They're more resilient. They're more resilient, yes. Huh. They're more resilient. Hmm. Youngsters today are, uh, are a little less resilient. Mm -hmm. And they seem to take things a little too personally sometimes. If things are not going my way, I get more upset. Yeah. Whereas let's say in the, in the other situation, they'll say, okay, no problem. Let's give it some more time and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, uh, youngsters, most often they say, you know, de what it defines them as a, as, as a person. Got it. So the self-identification is high. It's not that I have had a failure. I am a failure is how they look at it. Ah, got it. So there is no right. distinction between the action and the person. Correct. Yeah. That is something that I've, I've seen. Point. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, so uh, with regard to mm -hmm. the situations that they face, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, corporate executive and the uh, entrepreneur, do you think there's any profound difference in the situations that they confront or is it situations are kind of broadly the same, but their responses tend to be different? Uh, yes and no to both. Okay. In the sense that uh, for a corporate executive, uh, some, you know, I've been talking to quite a few of them ever since this situation started. Right. Uh, many of them are worried whether they're going to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain financial worry that they have. You know, I, am I going to be out of a job? Right. I am 40 plus, I am close to 50, I'm 50 plus. Where will I go and find a new job? What will I do? Right. The entrepreneurs on the other, other hand is, we're not having business. You know, we were all set to boom and suddenly we seem to be running out of money. Right. We are not getting as much business. So there is a financial worry for both that that I'm seeing, especially today. Got it. Got it. Uh, that the the entrepreneurs and the younger people are they are weathering it a little better. Mm -hmm. Primarily because mm -hmm. yeah. they have time on their hands, so to say. Right. 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 And they don't have familial and societal pressures that are as pressing as the as the older executives are facing. Got it. Oh, good point. Now, <clears throat> you know, you talked about the differences, let's say, between the corporate executives and the entrepreneurs, the different situations, how they respond to that. In your experience, how do you think women entrepreneurs relate to this? You know, we have a large number of women entrepreneurs who are part of the NICE and Arohana uh, sessions and the family here. Um, have you observed anything that is unique or any different, both from the kinds of situations they face and their own responses to the situations? Yes. Um, and, and especially more so here in India than with my clients elsewhere. Right. Uh, because the, the kind of family societal pressures that are, that are brought to bear on, on women is, all expectations uh, and all that, yeah. Yeah, is inordinately different and far more than anywhere else. Right. You know, uh, it is a fact that uh, they they shoulder more of the burden at home than uh, most men do. Right. And even if they are, you know, I'm reminded of what uh, Indra Nui had said hmm. when she came back home and uh, her mother looked at her and she said, and she was very tired. And uh, she was going to say, I'm very tired. I've had a hard day at the office. Mm -hmm. Her mother said, I don't care what you've had. We're out of milk. Go get some milk. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think that is, that is accentuated, that is further enhanced here in, 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 in India. Right. Um, also, that uh, many a time what happens is it becomes uh, 
an emotional turmoil for them because there is a certain conditioning that has been put in place. Mm. And most of the uh, women entrepreneurs, women executives, they are in constant conflict and uh, end up feeling not great about themselves. They're feeling that they're not doing enough. Got it. Not doing enough in, in, in each of the roles. Yes. And they're trying to, you know, one of the things that uh, we had used here also was they're trying to balance. Mm -hmm. And I tell them that don't try to, don't even try to uh, get a work-life balance. Right. I say, get a work-life blend. Mm -hmm. Because you need to choose and you need to understand that you are great. You are good. Right. Uh, and it is not how you perform that is going to define you as a person or an executive or as an entrepreneur. Correct. And uh, the one question I ask them to ask themselves every day is, in this situation, have I done the best I could in these circumstances? Got it. In that context, in that role, at that time, did I do my best? Yes. And not keep looking back all the time. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, I also have one uh, format, uh, Sanjay, where I ask people to respond every day, mm. where they answer a set of questions of the form. Today, did I do my best too? And those, that list would be a list of things that they've identified as being extremely important for them. Got it. One lady, very interesting. Mm. She would always, you know, uh, did great today. I gave myself a nine on a scale of 10. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? I did great today. Nine. Mm. Nine. And I noticed this for about, I noticed this for about 10 days. And I said, you know, what's the reason you're giving yourself a nine? Mm. She said, no, but then I will have to become better, right? Mm. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I said, did you do the best that you could yesterday? Right. If the answer is, yes, I've done the absolute best I can, then you have to give yourself a 10. Right, right. So it, it, it is this kind of thing that actually comes in the way. And I see this more in ladies than in the, the men. Okay. That's, a, that's an interesting uh, set of observations. And of course, it's not um, out of uh, whack to imagine that it would be different, right? I mean, because of all the different expectations of the multiple roles that- Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Now, you know, there are multiple sources of dissonance, right? It could be team conflict, it could be personal ambition, it could be money, uh, it could be sense of self, you know, have self-confidence, low self-esteem, all of those things that cause dissonance. In your experience, which, let's say, one or two uh, of these or anything else are the leading causes of these dissonance? Um, first one is team alignment, Sanjay. Alignment. Alignment of the team. Right. Uh, many a time, they are they're at cross purposes. While there seems to be on the surface alignment. Right. At the core, there is really not any alignment because the way in which they want to get to the same destination, mm -hmm. people have differing views and they are made up of the sum total of their experiences. Correct, correct, correct. And uh, this doesn't show up so, so easily. Mm -hmm. So I have realized that being able to have an environment where people can actually openly speak. Right. It comes back to where we started, the self-management bit, where I make it safe for somebody to, to, to tell me what they're actually feeling. Right. So it is okay to feel vulnerable and expose yourself. And, and you know, exposing vulnerability is actually a sign of strength. Got it. Because you're right. confident in who you are, you're able to say that, you know, I feel this way yes. or I feel bad about this or I yes. feel stressed out. Yes, Most yes. People, not yes. acknowledge it. Yes, this I think is. And the other thing that I'm noticing uh, in this time, especially in this, ever since the pandemic started, right. are the relationships that the team members have outside of the work area. Right, in their personal family. In their life. personal lives, families. That has become a huge, huge, huge problem that uh, I've been called in a lot of times now to actually 
support people on those areas. Got it. Not directly related to work, but other things. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And now, you know, coming to a situation where, you know, people face or feel all of these anxieties and concerns about themselves, and therefore they're unable to fulfill uh, their roles to the best of their abilities. What should they typically do? I mean, you know, should they go find a coach? Should they reach out to a mentor? Should they talk to friends? Uh, what what kinds of things should they do? Get some counseling? Uh, what would you suggest? I would certainly suggest that they should take uh, some kind of professional support. Right. The social circle, friend circle, family circle is all good. Right. But in most cases, you know, I yesterday I was in a marathon session, Sanjay, where uh, these are, uh, they're both business and otherwise partners, family right. partners. Right. I had a six hour session with them. My God. Huh. To sort out something that was, they were at, literally at each other's throats. Right. <clears throat> and the problem had come to this stage because the families had got involved. Got it. Right, so the families are well-meaning, but they, that doesn't mean that they are professionally equipped to, to be able to help them. Got it. So uh, definitely not somebody with an invested stake in the relationship. Talk to somebody who can, you know, be very clear about what you want. One is, are you just going to look for venting? Right. Or are you looking for somebody who's going to tell you something that is an uncomfortable truth that you need to hear? Right. And so my suggestion would be to actively look out for mentors, right, coaches, or counselors, or people who've been there, done that before. Got it. Right. Simply just go around, talk to somebody who's been there, done that before. Right. I think that would be the simplest thing to do. At least we'll be, we'll, if nothing else, we'll get a different perspective. Understood. So somebody who can give you dispassionate uh, 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 inputs. Absolutely. Uh, because that comes out of their <clears throat> insights and experience. Absolutely. Now, when I, let's say, you know, I, I, I am, I'm feeling stressed out, I'm feeling uh, uncomfortable, I reach out to a mentor or a counselor, somebody told me, hey, go talk to some uh, expert counselor or experienced person. What should I, as the individual, look for in, in the mentor? Because, you know, there are all kinds of people I don't know. So what should I look for? First is, uh, I think, uh, uh, is the person listening with their entire being? Hmm. Not just with your eyes or ears, but with their entire being. Are they giving me 100% attention? Right. How, how would I know that? Um, simple, Sanjay. No looking at uh, anything, no electronic uh, distractions. If I'm there, uh, am I the single point of focus for them? Mm. That's the first thing. Responding to what you're saying. Correct. And they're listening with their entire being. Mm. Are they inspiring me, making me feel safe to talk? Mm. Yeah. Uh, are they listening to me completely? And mm. secondly, I'm going to take what you did just now, you know, mm. which is I, I spoke a lot and you took it and you broke it down into four points and you said, is this what it is? Right. Right. So a person who can actually listen to the problem, mm -hmm. paraphrases and give it back in a simple form. Right. So the person understands what they should. Correct. Got it. Uh, one of the most important things that uh, most of my clients have told me is that you, you make it sound simple. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I don't make it sound simple. It is simple. I am just okay. bringing, okay. giving it. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So it's important, I think, uh, you know, for the benefit of the audience, uh, talk to somebody who you feel comfortable with, you feel confident that they will listen to you, be open, be honest, share what is bothering you, and yeah. listen to what they have to say. And Absolutely. if you don't understand, ask questions, right? I mean, Absolutely. Okay to ask questions. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, the other thing that... Uh, you know, I would say that, is this person giving me a message that I don't necessarily like, but I need to hear? Correct. So for that, I need to be self-aware, right? I mean, I, Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'm okay to listen to bad news. Correct. Right. I mean, it could very well be feedback saying, you know what, you need to change. You need to stop being so dominating. You need to yeah. you know, not yeah. lose your cool and stuff like that. So I need Absolutely. to have the maturity to accept that feedback. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, you know, you've, you've been doing this for a while, um, uh, Chino, and over the course of the past years that you've been doing this, what have been some of the, what have been some of the changes that you have observed? with regard to the kinds of problems, with regard to the kinds of responses, uh, with regard to uh, uh, the, the, the kinds of uh, uh, tools that people use. What has been your general uh, experience of how things have changed? Um, it's getting a lot faster and uh, everything, you know, it seems to be I want it all and I want it now kind of approach that most people have now today. Okay. Uh, if I'm not first off the block, if I've not made it, then I've lost. So, I, you know, it is also um, a factor of how quickly, you know, even especially in the, you know, technology is coming in and changing things. Right. Right. If, if I'm not there and if I've not captured the market hmm. and uh, uh, also, one of the things that I keep saying is that people are taking the stories of, let's say, the 90s, the early 2000s, and even as, as late as 2010. What was possible then and what was the paradigm then is no longer the paradigm now. So it, it all depends on the context, right? Meaning Correct. at this time, in this Correct. situation, in the role that I am playing, with the team and the environment around what is the appropriate response, right? Absolutely. So understanding that is critical. Absolutely. Got and it. you know, and, and uh, uh, thankfully now, uh, you know, one of the, I know it is not many people who like me saying this, but one of the good things of, that has come out of this pandemic is this been a, a reality check for most people. Right, right. You know, uh, this is all there is. There isn't much. People are people are also coming to terms with. You know, I don't need actually so much. Absolutely, very true, very true. Yeah. Right, and if they expand that, hmm. they're realizing that there isn't such a big market out there for almost everything that is being sold till now. Correct. So the need versus want situation, right? Correct. Excellent. I think yeah. that has changed now, Got and it. that has sunk in. Uh, it has been a bitter uh, uh, lesson, but I think it is, people have learned that lesson now. Got it. And uh, so, you know, uh, we have about another 11 minutes or so before the session ends. But let me do one thing. I will get into the questions that are coming in on Facebook and everywhere else. And sure. but before that, you know, I need to make a quick announcement to the uh, audience. Uh, and it is an important announcement that uh, I will make uh, relating to the, uh, just a minute, the business plan competition, the Arohana NICE business plan competition is going to take place January through February of next year. Uh, please keep your eyes open for the announcements that will start in the first week of January. And we'd love to have all of you participate actively and, uh, you know, really give your ideas a shot. There's going to be cash prizes. There'll be a lot of other uh, goodies and uh, you'll get to meet uh, top investors in the course of this business plan competition, right? So uh, that's, that's, I wanted to let everybody know about it. So please uh, keep that in mind. And so coming to the questions, um, uh, Chino, um, one, uh, uh, Usha Subramanya asks, you know, if a mentor is not comfortable with, then I end up feeling not truly understood, right? I'm not feeling comfortable with a mentor. I don't believe I'm getting entirely understood. Should I go back to that mentor and try again? Or should I look for another mentor? So um, if there is a, a lack of comfort and I, I you know, if, a, if it's a mentor, and if that person hasn't been able to inspire hmm. uh, the person in that one meeting that they have, right. I would suggest that, you know, give them one more chance. 
Yeah. So don't write them off. Don't write them off because you know uh, mentors, coaches are also bad. Uh, you know they are also human beings. <laughs> they might have a bad day. Yeah. Right. Just right. give them that benefit of doubt, and if the second time also it's the same, then uh, find yourself a mentor. Find somebody else. Got it. Okay. Question coming in from Avna Sharma. Thanks for your insights, Chinu. Been very calming. My question regards regarding uh, seeking a mentor or a guide in my field of marketing and branding. Folks, I hold in high regard. Have shown little interest in helping me. Should I course correct? What should I do? So I'm going to go back and say, you know, make it interesting. Inspire, you know, inspire them to take an interest in you. As long as you I keep saying. to excite them absolutely they should, they should want to help me absolutely how do i inspire them because as long as i keep saying they have shown little interest right i'll just flip that statement to say mm. i have not made it interesting enough for them right right so they must uh, be interested huh? absolutely got so like going to a customer and saying customer yes. is not buying from me it's my job to convince the customer to buy my product right absolutely absolutely In a similar situation yes okay um question from saurabh kumar how to manage a traditional senior manager if my attitude is different from theirs you know typical traditional senior manager i'm assuming is you know somebody who is very authoritative hierarchy oriented my way highway types um well i don't want to give a generic answer because this is this would change from context. individual to individual and in the context right uh, i'd only say that uh, one one uh, one thing that i will uh, i use in my life and i use it with my clients is when i'm convinced that something is right mm -hmm. i try to i work with proving the exact opposite wrong got it so i take 180 different 180 degree opposing view and actively work to prove that right got it what it helps me do is to gain different perspectives and why it might why that person might be acting in that way got it so it, you put yourself in the shoes of the other person and argue right. from that point of view absolutely so that you understand the situation from the other side and right. uh, then we might be able to Uh, deal with that person engage with that person a little better got it so it kind of also develops empathy and understanding right yes yes uh, so uh, uh, then the question comes in from um, raghavan who says how do i start my day do i maintain a diary write down things i need to do my own let's say my emotions and things like that get expressed what is that a good idea absolutely journaling is extremely powerful mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know writing three things that a person is grateful for mm -hmm. uh, i found that uh, i'll give you i'll give you an example sanjay i have something called a happiness journal i've developed this i have given it to a few people i'm happy to share it and uh, this is i don't have in my life there is no copyright <laughs> okay there yeah. is only copyright so that's the copyright right <laughs> so so you know if you can share that uh, happiness journal with us we'll put it out on our uh, handles right absolutely It'll value to all the entrepreneurs absolutely a very simple thing sanjay right five things that i'm grateful for in my life until today mm -hmm. right that is in the in the morning mm -hmm. i write down five things that i'm grateful for in my life until today got it what are the five things that i appreciate myself for right what are the three things that i'm going to achieve today mm -hmm. what are the things i'm going to be aware of today about myself got it so you set and goals for yourself as well as self awareness in the morning mm -hmm. in the night a uh, flip side mm -hmm. what are the three things that i'm grateful for today mm -hmm. what are the five things that i can appreciate myself in for today got it what have i learned about myself what am i going to focus on for tomorrow right uh, i did this exercise sanjay with somebody who was being treated for uh, medically treated for depression oh i see 13 weeks of following this completely off medication hmm and uh, you know it did amazing things so i'm happy to share that interesting and yeah interesting. so it forces self reflection right absolutely yes Very important question coming in from uh, rituparna de um 
she asks uh, how can i communicate to my co-founders that they need to take up more ownership in the venture without reacting i have shared the list of tasks pending tasks but those are not being taken up um the simple answer is how do i inspire them to take ownership right so uh, what is it that might stop them if i understand again going back to what is it that stops them from taking ownership right how can i make it easier for them to take ownership right i think uh, that would be a place where i would start uh, you know i don't want to give a, a generic medication for something that is very specific <laughs> yeah no i think it's an important point you make that is and i think if i were to abstract what you just said don't look at the other person look at yourself and say what can i do better to get them to step up to the plate absolutely correct like like uh, like gandhi said be the change you want to see in the world absolutely so in other words if there is something that is holding them back what is it i need to discover yes and be intimidated by me right that could be one thing you know are they saying or oh, there is a understanding gap or there is some other problem right which i need to uncover so the onus comes back to me yeah and uh, you know one specific thing is how do i communicate that they need to take up without reacting yeah. so very elegantly you know is there any support that i can give you to complete this because it is important you, for the larger scheme help? of things ah, do you need any help to complete that yeah. so yeah. take a solution approach rather than a problem finding approach rather than say why have you done this yeah yeah so, uh, instead of putting it that way how can i help you do this yes understood so that's a very nice way that's a good tool actually by the way yeah. right that people can learn from uh, to put, yeah. to put this into practice yes uh, there is a question again that you know guru has asked and is a interesting question ignorance is bliss knowledge is power uh, very one. interesting the second part of that sanjay uh, how does i mean? studied in chennai hmm? in padma sheshadri oh yes uh. and uh, the motto of the school is knowledge is power Okay. <laughs> so I was seventeen, and I met with this absolutely amazing lady, this principal, Mrs. Vijay Patsarthi. Right. And uh, I said, "Ma'am, knowledge is power." Hmm. She said, "Yes." Um, I don't quite think so. And she looked at me. I was seventeen. Right. <laughs> and she looked at me, and she said, "You know what? What do you know?" You know, and and in Tamil, she actually said, "You're a sapling without three leaves. What the hell do you know?" Yeah. <laughs> so I said, "Ma'am, I know enough to know that knowledge is in power." Mm. <laughs> nice. So she said, "What do you think it is?" Mm. I said, "Ma'am, knowledge is potential power. Mm. Application of knowledge appropriately is absolute power." Excellent. Huh? So she looked at me, looked up and down, and she said, "I'm not going to change the motto now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, the other part is ignorance is bliss. Yeah. i really don't think so hmm. you know if i was standing on a railway line right and i didn't know there was a train that was coming at me at uh, whatever speed hmm. ignorance is not bliss again it's contextual right i mean it I is mean, contextual there is no yes no absolute black absolutely and white, right it is contextual absolutely i think that that's the i think the key takeaway from all of this is that one can't make a generic rule out of a particular circumstance absolutely not correct so it very is very 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 specific to the situation the context and that is why by engaging with a coach or a mentor the specific context gets discussed absolutely. right and hence the solution you know emerges yeah. correct i i had once a situation uh, sanjay where uh, there was one person who was part of one of my assistants right they were looking at a certain situation where the same kind of question at two different times i gave completely 180 degree different answers <laughs> so this person said there you said that here you're saying this i said that because that is because the situation is very different the context is different correct right. and understanding We that cannot that. yeah excellent so you know where that brings us to the end of this session namaste now before we officially close this session i need to make another uh, announcement about the uh, next set of uh, uh, programs that we have 
and uh, this is about the next session that we have which is on the 30th of uh, december we have a double session on that day so please note it down mark your calendars there is saroja yaramalli who is the founder ceo of melora and you know uh, a very uh, exciting journey of hers as an entrepreneur in the fashion and accessories category um, so she'll be on at 4 o'clock followed by disha singh who is the founder of zook again a very fascinating journey again fashion and accessories so she will come on at 10 minutes to 5 pm on the 30th of december so please mark it down on your calendars and make it a point to attend this um, i think you'll find both of them to be very very interesting and exciting so that brings us to the end of this session chinu uh, it remains for me to thank the audience for being patient sending in their questions and responses you know with regard to your sharing of the journal uh, do email it to us and uh, we will get it with uh, the audience right on all our handles thank you very very much you know i'm sure there's been a very helpful to everybody particularly all the entrepreneurs who have tuned in uh, it'll be very beneficial thank you my privilege my privilege thank you very much uh, sanjay and thank you nice all the very best to the entrepreneurs thank you very much thank you namaste